As we turn now to South Texas, where Elon Musk's SpaceX is claiming success after the first launch of its massive new rocket dubbed Starship, the two-stage prototype lifted off Thursday morning from SpaceX's sprawling base on Texas's Gulf Coast, near the U.S. border with Mexico, becoming the largest and heaviest machine ever to fly under its own power. At least six of the rocket's 33 engines failed during flight. The vehicle self-destructed over the Gulf of Mexico about four minutes after liftoff. Residents of Port Isabel, near the launch site, reported particulates or ash rained down on their neighborhoods. The fiery end to the launch was the latest in a series of explosions around SpaceX's launch site, near the lower Rio Grande Valley National Wildlife Refuge. This comes as three liquefied natural gas projects in the Rio Grande Valley were just approved by FERC, that's the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Indigenous environmental and community organizers responded Thursday to the SpaceX launch and explosion and denounced the new projects. This is Christopher Basaldu. Rio Bravo Pipeline and SpaceX, none of these companies consulted with the original people of this land, the Carizocome Crudo tribe of Texas. None of them consulted with the tribe. None of them have our consent. But yet, they still want to destroy native homelands, ancestral homelands. We never gave our consent, and they're moving forward. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission they never consulted with the tribe. They don't have our consent, and they're moving forward anyway. That's not justice. They're enabling Musk to destroy our lands and destroy this beautiful area. It needs to stop. These are all the, the histories of colonial genocide against Native people and Native lands. For more, we're joined in Brownsville, Texas, by Becca Hinojosa, an environmental and community advocate with the Grassroots Collaborative Another Gulf is Possible. She's one of the many people who spoke out against SpaceX and faced repression and persecution. Last year, police broke into her home and arrested her after she was accused of spray-painting the words gentrified and stop SpaceX under a mural in downtown Brownsville. She's still fighting these charges. Becky Hinojosa, welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. So, yesterday, Elon Musk declared uh, success when his um, SpaceX ro rocket exploded. Now, actually, though he was, of course, mocked by many, um, what does a failure mean if your rocket explodes out of control? Scientifically, it's a chance to test different uh, ways of trying to shoot off this rocket. But you're on the ground. If you can talk about what SpaceX means for your communities. You know, we're tired of living under the constant threat of flammable, you know, rocket explosions because of SpaceX. Um, you know, Elon Musk. Uh, is on his quest to colonize Mars, and it's beginning. He's beginning by colonizing, you know, our community that's on the front lines of the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, you know, that's on the front lines of the Gulf Coast, where we're dealing with layers and layers of injustices. Um, you know, our community is uh, opposed to SpaceX's operations. Um, yesterday, uh, you know, 27 organizations from the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, signed on to a letter um, officially opposing the rocket launch. So, talk about how who controls where he does this work, and in fact, does he choose this area of Texas and the Mexico border um, because of the deregulation of Texas and the fact um, what kind of regulation does he face and what kind of consent is required, if any, of the local community? You know, it's very clear that Elon Musk um, moved into our border community uh, to, to take over, um, to colonize the region. Um, we're clearly being exploited by a billionaire and his pet project. Um, you know, we are a low-income community of, of color. Um, and Texas has a long history of, of deregulation, of just rubber stamping uh, permits and approvals for, for any big industry. Um, and also give out numerous tax subsidies. Um, you know, that's what we've seen with, with SpaceX. 
uh, you know, he's moved into our community and, you know, turned us into a, a testing ground. Uh, it's at the point now where, you know, I, I hear a noise, my family and I, and we wonder, you know, is is that SpaceX? Um, and it come, we come to find out that the rumble is because of a, a rocket launch or I, you know, hear a huge explosion or blast from from 10 miles away. And it turns out that SpaceX has done some kind of unannounced rocket testing. Um, you know, we're constantly dealing with just the growth uh, of SpaceX and their operations. So, Becca, um, last year you were violently arrested after police broke into your home without showing you a warrant. You were detained for, what, more than a day, for 26 hours. Police took your glasses. They placed you in a cold cell after you were interrogated, charged with what, a misdemeanor, accused of spray-painting these words, gentrified and stop SpaceX under a mural in downtown Browns Brownsville. Um, the outgoing Brownsville mayor, Trey Mendez, posted a photo of you on his social media thanking the police for your arrest. He also wrote, quote, Ms. Inahosa has been quoted in several anti-SpaceX articles. Can you talk about the former mayor, Mendez's ties to SpaceX, and how local officials have come after environmental and community advocates like you um, over opposition to SpaceX? You are still fighting these charges? You know, I'm still, I'm still dealing, uh, fighting to have this charge dropped against me. Um, you know, SpaceX is growing into our community. SpaceX is, uh, and Elon Musk are actively handing out uh, you know, money here and there, and it's becoming political hush money. You know, it's buying out politicians. We've seen when a SpaceX testing goes wrong, which it always goes wrong and burns down wildlife refuge, you know, political officials just turning the other way. And, you know, I've been personally impacted now by, you know, SpaceX uh, buying out community members, uh, buying out politicians, uh, when, you know, last year, uh, four police uh, broke into my apartment um, when I asked for a warrant and tried to put on my shoes. Uh, they threatened me with resisting arrest. Um, you know, they uh, jailed me for 26 hours. And then I come to find out once I'm released that Mayor Trey Mendez, who's still in office, uh, you know, for the next month, um, has doxed me. Uh, you know, he posted uh, my mugshot on his official Facebook He's page. He's the current mayor. He is the current mayor. Uh, his term ends in, in May. Um, he's chosen not to run for re-election. Uh, and I've come to find that the mayor has has doxxed me. He published my mugshot on his official Facebook platform. Um, he posted my job, trying to get me fired. Um, you know, he, he singled me out and targeted me because I've been publicly, um, I've been speaking up about the dangers of SpaceX for years. And what this means is that, you know, the city... Uh, is signaling to us that, you know, community, any community organizer speaking up could be next. Um, they're targeting community activists, and we are actively rallying and pressuring the city to, to, to investigate Mayor Mendez for abuse of power. Um, you know, we won't tolerate uh, elected officials singling out and targeting and doxing community members, um, you know, the city is signaling to us that they're selling out to a private space industry. Talk about how the environment has been impacted. For people who are watching TV to see the SpaceX launch, you see in the upper left Boca Chica. Talk about Boca Chica, where the fresh waters of the Rio Grande trickle into the Gulf of Mexico, the beaches and protected lands such as the lower Rio Grande Valley National Wildlife Refuge near SpaceX. Yeah, I want to make it clear that Boca Chica Beach was was never for sale. Um, you know, Elon Musk has come and colonized uh, our region. Um, you know, Boca Chica Beach is you know part of a, a state park. It's part of the lower near the lower Rio Grande Valley Wildlife Refuge. It's part of an international wildlife corridor that's very important for you know species to migrate for genetic diversity. Um, Boca Chica Beach and the entire region is also sacred lands of the Carisoco Mocorudo tribe. And, you know, families have been going there for generations uh, to fish. Uh, Boca Chica Beach is considered the poor people's beach because it's for local people that go, don't have to pay fees to enter and can go 
fish to feed their families. Um, it's also where the Garisoko Mokrudo tribe hold their sacred ceremonies. And Elon Musk and SpaceX have been using their private police force and the local police to turn people away. Um, so he can host his press conferences and parties and test dangerous rocket equipment. Um, you know, that's what we've been seeing. Uh, you know, some of the routine uh, uh, testing has caused, you know, over 60 acres of the wildlife refuge to burn down, um, has sparked grass fires. Um, you know, we've seen threats and, and, and deaths of migratory birds uh, and endangered species like the ocelot. Um, I also wanted to ask you about this point that we raised in the lead as well, and that is, um, last year, the Federal Aviation Administration determined that SpaceX's plans for orbital launches would have no significant impact on the Gulf Coast region. The FAA's ruling came after SpaceX founder Elon Musk accused the agency of having a fundamentally broken, a fundamentally broken regulatory structure after it didn't rapidly approve an early Starship test flight. The FAA has also reportedly faced pressure from major SpaceX contractors, including NASA, Pentagon and the National Reconnaissance Office, all of whom rely heavily on SpaceX to launch satellites and astronauts to orbit and beyond. Um, NASA selected, for example, a version of SpaceX's Starship as a lander for its upcoming Artemis III mission, which aims to return astronauts to the moon for the first time in half a century. So they're using this private company uh, for the Pentagon, for the FAA, for all of this NASA work? No, it's very clear that Elon Musk and SpaceX has become, you know, is becoming too big to hold accountable, um, you know, and is getting away with uh, harming our community. Um, and, you know, what we need are, you know, real solutions. We need investments. Uh, you know, in, in, in Earth, the problems we have here on the planet of climate change. And instead, we see our tax subsidies go towards um, a billionaire's pet project um, for a billionaire to go, uh, you know, to space as part of his sci-fi adventure. Um, I wanted to finally ask you um, about the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission approving the Rio Grande LNG, uh, Texas LNG, you know, liquid natural, natural gas, um, and the Rio Bravo pipeline Thursday, just hours after the SpaceX explosion. These projects are within a few miles from SpaceX and have faced fierce opposition from groups like yours. Talk about what's at stake and with these projects, especially in the Rio Grande and the Gulf of of Mexico's area of the country that are in the front lines of the climate crisis. Yeah, we're dealing with layers and layers of environmental disasters here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, you know, communities we've been I've been fighting back to stop these LNG terminals for nearly a decade. Um, Rio Grande LNG, Texas LNG, and the Rio Bravo pipeline plan to build, you know, next door to SpaceX within six miles. Um, you know, and we're we're terrified of the very real threat that exploding rockets next to giant tanks of gas, next to giant tankers of gas, where we've already seen, you know, rocket shrapnel raining even further past six miles. Uh, and we're being left in the in the dark. Um, we haven't heard from regulatory agencies about the flammable risks. Um, you know, and communities here have made it absolutely clear that we oppose these LNG export terminals. Uh, all of our communities have passed anti-LNG resolutions, uh, Port Isabel, South Padre Island, Laguna Vista, Long Island Village, um, you know, because of, you know, the threat of flammable explosion from SpaceX, because this would completely uh, destroy our, our way of life. Uh, we are one of the last little pieces of the South Texas coastline that doesn't have refineries or flare stacks. Um, and, you know, LNG would completely change our way of life for, for, the, for the worse. Well, Becca Hinojoso, I want to thank you for being with us, environmental and community advocate with the Grassroots Collaborative, Another Gulf is Possible.